Who doesn't love a great video game sequel? A chance to revisit your favorite characters, improved graphics and gameplay, all from a trusted brand that you already know you love. There's really no downside, if it's good. Unfortunately, not all follow-ups are created equal. Here are some of the most disappointing video game sequels ever made. Advance Wars Dual Strike the first installment of the Advance War series was a turn-based strategy game that was easy to learn and difficult to master, and established the series' colorful cast, innovative gameplay, and delightful animation. The sequel, Advance Wars 2 Black Hole Rising, doubled down on the successful style with improved map diversity, more characters, and greater depth. With those two games to build from, fans were excited to see what improvements would be made when the series hit the Nintendo DS with Advance Wars Dual Strike. Unfortunately, they were greeted by vague personalities and designs, a ridiculously short campaign, and worst of all, completely broken combat. While exciting at first, Dual Strike encouraged players to be much more reckless and aggressive, ruining the balanced strategies and puzzle-like complexity of the original games. The franchise stumbled forwards with one more sequel that was unrelated to the franchise plot, but the development team moved on to the Fire Emblem series, and so did the fans. Shadow the Hedgehog it's almost impossible to talk about a list of disappointing video game sequels without discussing this bizarre monstrosity. Supposedly an attempt to cash in on the popularity of Shadow the Hedgehog, who was essentially a 90s comic book badass version of Sonic, the game is a bizarre mishmash that wouldn't satisfy existing fans or new players. Look how pathetic they are. I don't have time for these humans. For the most part, it's consistent with the fast-paced action of past Sonic games, but innovates by adding a motorcycle and guns, a painful control scheme, overwrought dialogue, and a bizarrely complex storyline, complete with over-the-top titles like Apogee of Darkness and Messenger of Ruination. The game has a dozen unique endings, but it's hard to imagine a player finishing the game once, let alone the multiple times necessary to see each story. Resident Evil 6 if bigger is better when it comes to sequels, Resident Evil 6 is the exception that proves the rule. For this installment of the long-running horror franchise, Capcom added over half a dozen playable characters, multiple campaigns, and massive monster-filled scenes. Unfortunately, it suffers from death by committee. There's such an uneven tone throughout that it's impossible for players to know whether they're supposed to be scared or exhilarated. Add in the mind-boggling decision to have multiple campaigns cross over with identical levels, and you've got a game that seems artificial officially inflated, like some kind of monstrous pufferfish, which, come to think of it, would probably be scarier than many of the monsters in this overbaked sequel. Mass Effect Andromeda BioWare's Mass Effect Andromeda had a lot to live up to. The previous trilogy had defined BioWare's output for a generation, with fans so invested that the last game had to take two tries at an ending just to satisfy them. Andromeda, on the other hand, wasn't good or bad, it was just forgettable. Wow. Well, if that's how it has to be. With its limited alien diversity, a paint-by-numbers plot, and lackluster writing, it feels like a rough draft of the original trilogy, a feeling that's only increased by the spotty graphics and bizarre character model bugs. On the other hand, this leaves the field open for fan-favorite character Garrus to get that spin-off game that we've all been clamoring for. Over the years, I've grown used to the smell of burning bodies. That's probably a bad sign. Bomberman Act Zero While gritty, violent remakes have been the standard for years, making a child-friendly game grow up by adding a body count and a grim setting just feels sad. Bomberman Act Zero is a perfect example of when gritty goes wrong, taking a fun party game and turning it into something that's equal parts horrific and boring. The villains even scream when you blow them up. Still, it could have worked if the game wasn't so horrendously repetitive that few players actually bothered to finish it. But there's no excuse for ruining the gameplay that made Bomberman games so fun in the first place. Duke Nukem Forever the Duke Nukem franchise was a product of its time, a muscle-bound action hero with a penchant for killing aliens and a one-liner for every occasion. With the kind of explicit content that usually only comes from giving a 13-year-old boy a pen, a notebook, and a whole lot of free time. Mm, don't have time to play with myself. 
As crude as it is, there's an immature charm that made Duke Nukem 3D a success when it was released in 1996. By the time Duke Nukem Forever rolled around 15 years later, all that charm had worn off. The new game was boring, with bad controls and pop culture references so dated that they were making references to the Olsen twins in 2011. Even if you were in the mood for this particular brand of misogynistic humor, everything about Duke Nukem aged about as well as spoiled milk. Pac-Man 2 – The New Adventures the original Pac-Man is a thing of simple beauty. It's easy to understand, simple to play, and mercilessly difficult at higher levels. Even after four decades of quarter-munching action, it stands as one of the most iconic video games of all time. When Namco released a sequel after 15 years, they had a lot to live up to and decided to throw out every single thing that made the original game work. Instead of improving on the mazes and ramping up fast-paced action, Pac-Man 2 is an achingly slow point-and-click adventure game where players interact with the environment in order to change Pac-Man's mood so he accomplishes simple tasks. The ghosts are there, but rather than chasing Pac-Man constantly, they're mostly absent while Pac-Man wanders around eating hot dogs and fights a monster made of bubblegum. Most of the games on this list are bad, but this one's just bizarre. Paper Mario Sticker Star The most important rule of an RPG is to have a reward for players when they fight something. Experience points, new spells, loot, Pokémon even gives you the chance to catch a new best friend. Either way, there has to be a reason to make players happy to face down the constant threat of random fights. In Paper Mario Sticker Star, players don't get experience points from beating monsters, or anything else. In fact, these fights can actually waste not just your time, but your valuable inventory, too. Every attack in the game requires the use of a sticker, and each sticker is a single-use item that you have to keep in a strictly limited inventory. With nothing to gain from the endless fights sapping your stickers, the whole the structure of the game breaks down. Take away the reward and all you're left with is the merciless grind. At that point, you might as well go play outside. Thanks for watching. Click the SVG icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.